Last time on the Skip and Josh podcast. I just watch whatever game is on. So I'll turn yeah, on, I'll turn on the TV, and whatever game's on, I'll watch. Now I didn't watch any of the late games because that's way too late for me. I mean, way I, too late. I maybe can watch the first period, and that's it. Yeah. Um, first of all, let's congratulate you because you had Vegas winning in four straight, and they did. In the category of I had that. Yes. The Skip and Josh podcast is on now. Hello, Skippy. Hey. Did you watch the uh did you watch the Leafs Bruins game just now, game 7? Just ended like uh, about f- 3 minutes ago. But did you actually watch cuz I know you don't care about either of those teams? No, it was such a big night in sports. I mean, look, you're in Toronto. It's crazy so... here. The Leafs played, the Raptors played, the Jays played, the Toronto Marlies played, the TFC played. Yeah, TFC has that big game against the uh, the Mexican uh, Guadalajara. You, someone's gonna have to explain soccer to me one day because the, the teams in the MLS play more games against teams in other continents than they do against teams in their own league. Oh, just the just TFC because they advanced in this tournament that, that they were in. They they made it all the way to the finals. How do you play a tournament in the middle of your regular season? Anyway, that's what happens in soccer. Anyways, we're not gonna get we're no, not we're not get on that. No, we're not. We decided to. Uh, chat uh little literally minutes after the round one of the stanley cup playoffs ended so we could make our comments about round one and our predictions for round two yes because our fans are clamoring for predictions for next round you went eight no and all the all the gamblers out there want to hear your picks for round two so they can make some money because if they're betting with you they're ahead of the game I was eight and zero. Oh. You were you were seven and one. All, all, you Not know, too shabby. Just just to give you a little, you know, give you your props there. Um, I was eight and zero, oh, and I had the Vegas Golden Knights in four. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually really cheering for the Bruins, and as a Montreal Canadiens fan, that's a hard thing to do yes. because just so I could go eight and zero, oh, you know, it is a hard thing to do. It was really yes. I watched. I didn't watch the beginning. I watched most of the second period and all of the third. Um, I watched a little bit of Raptors tonight. And um, and also that fantastic finish in the uh, Cavaliers Pacers game. I don't know if you saw. I that. didn't see any wild. of it, but I get alerts on my phone when like breaking yeah. news happens, and I yeah. never get alerts about basketball because I've turned off that setting. Like I only want alerts on certain things. Yet right. somehow I got this alert that LeBron James hit a hit a buzzer beater. A fadeaway yeah. three pointer or something is I I didn't see the basket but whatever he had a huge block shot and then with three seconds left they called timeout and then he hit a he hit a he hit a buzzer beater. Anyways, let's get on to hockey. We we don't want to no. do a long episode. This may be just a like we call it a little mini episode. Yeah, I like the mini episode. Like instead of episode ninety three, maybe this is like ninety two point five. The National Hockey League. My observation of the first round of the NHL playoffs is that there were so many goals scored. I mean, I haven't seen this many goals scored in the playoffs in hockey in like, I think, 20 years or something. It's pretty incredible because all I've been saying for the last two years is that the Stanley Cup playoffs, while it is great and there is so much drama, it's not good hockey because there's so much um, shenanigans with the the refs not calling anything and teams get away with all kinds of stuff and it, which makes it impossible to score <laughs> and like you said there's been so many goals look even tonight game 7 look at the score Was it right 7-4 I mean, final well an empty netter at the end but still 10 6 to 4 it reminds me goals. of the heyday of the Oilers when they had Gretzky yeah, but I mean, they had, yeah. Well, That's what I it guess. reminds I mean, me of. Back then, everybody could score. Back then, John O'Grodnick scored 50 goals. Oh my God. That, what a blast <laughs> from the past that is. <laughs> so. By the way, speaking um, of John O'Grodnick, that reminds yeah. me of Dave Andrichuk. And that guy, Dave Andrichuk, is in the Hall of Fame, if I'm not mistaken. But He's like top top five or top 10 in all-time goals scored. Is he? I don't know, but like yeah, for sure. I remember when for he sure. got inducted to the Hall of Fame. I'm like, this guy isn't a Hall of Fame worthy uh, player. But anyway, no, that's because amazing. he played a million years and he scored a lot of goals. Anyway, he scored All a right, lot of so power play goals, and you know how I feel about right? power play goals when it's easier to <laughs> yes, score. Exactly. Right, not harder, easier. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
the Bruins certainly capitalized tonight not on the power play goals, but on the four on four. They scored they scored the tying goal and the go ahead goal, both four on four. The Bruins, the first of all, the Leafs were like two different teams. They were great in the second period and lousy yeah. in the third. It was like a completely different team on the ice. I don't know what happened in the intermission. It's easy it's easy to to say, oh, the Leafs were nervous. I don't think they were nervous. I think the playoffs it, first of all, let's talk about game sevens in general. So what, what the other thing that that my observation of the playoffs, you talked about all the offense. My observation so far is there's only been one game seven. And like there's been other years where we've had like at least half the series are going seven. Yeah. Right? That's true. So not only like everybody else is just waiting around for the Bruins and the Leafs to finish. And there were two right? sweeps, which it's rare to see a sweep. Very rare, yeah. So um were the Leafs nervous in the third period? I don't think I so. I think they were I tired. Think... They looked exhausted. But I mean, they but... didn't look tired in the second period. I don't know what happened in the span of like 15, 20 minutes. I think it's all about raising your game. Just when you think you can hit a level of play that's like this high, you have to go higher. You know, you have to find another gear that you didn't think you could have. And I think sometimes experienced teams are able to draw on that and say, yes, we can do better than this. We we know how we know where we are. We got to do more there. The, you you got to constantly do find something that you don't think you have and 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 get there and i think that's what the bruins did the bruins were skating like cr- the third period really was like it was completely one-sided oh, yeah, totally and and I mean, and i know one of our listeners is not going to be happy about this but frederick anderson had a great regular season and he had a great playoffs but he had a lousy third period look Fred is frederick anderson a good goalie yes yeah i think he's better than is a good he goalie. great sometimes um, me, we've both agreed. I think he's in this day and age. You can win the Stanley Cup with Frederick. Absolutely. Anderson. You know, there, there. You don't like we, like we said many times. You don't have to have a superstar. Yeah, in it's not like the days of Patrick Roy and Martin Brodeur when they would just rotate and alternate between Stanley Cups between the two of them. If you have one of those guys, great. But you can win the Stanley Cup with Tuka Rask, Frederick Anderson. Um, uh, Pecorine. Pecorine, you know, maybe maybe we're gonna find out about uh, Hellebuck, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so so I think he's good, and 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 the Leafs are gonna. This is where we're gonna find out a little bit about how the Leafs' plan is gonna go because it's been a steady climb, and they've reached reached the first round, and they played a tough opponent in the Bruins, and now let's see where they go next year. Can they? Can they take another step in their development? Can Frederick Anderson take another step in his development? And all the young players, you know? So, I mean, look, as Leaf fans, you have nothing to be ashamed of. You had a good season. You played, you you had a lousy matchup in the first round. You played one of the best teams in the league. But, you know? but. Took him to seven. The truth is, they didn't go any further this year than they did last year. They had a better regular season, but they lost yeah. in the first round last year. They lost in the first round this year. So, yeah. the pessimistic people will say, they haven't improved at all. This is where we're going to see the organization. Are they going to panic and they're going to make bad moves? They're going to make some kind of panic moves to just say, let's go for it. We got to fix this. We got to fix that. Or are they going to more or less stay the course? I think they have enough stuff internally that they don't need to start making all kinds of crazy moves. How they're going to get better is the players that they have are going to get better. You know what I mean? Right. Except, I mean, it's not, they don't have to go out and acquire guys. Other guys they have can be better. You know, they can. The they can, experience. and they will improve. Um, although, if you said to me today that the Leafs mm-hmm. and Bruins are going to play each other again next year in round one, and you asked Bruins me to make a win. pick, I would pick the <laughs> Bruins. Yeah. Well, I mean, they seem to have their number, right? Yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to a similar scenario in a oh, minute. We are. Let you do. You, yeah. <laughs> you know what I? You know where I'm going I know with exactly that? Exactly where you're going. Um. Do you want to start looking at the series, the upcoming series? Yes, let's do that. All right. Let's start with where we just left off. Tampa Bay, Boston. What um, do you think? So I, I'm, I'm really high on Tampa. I got to tell you, I was very impressed with the season they had. They basically mm-hmm. led the division wire to wire. I mean, they might have been, there were a few days where they weren't in first place, maybe. But I think they led the division wire to wire, if I'm not mistaken. Um, at the end of the year, th- there may have been a day or two where the Bruins passed them. Yeah, but but I mean, maybe other than not, those I don't know. two days, they were pretty much in first place the entire time, and uh, mm-hmm. they've also had plenty of time to uh, rest all their injuries if they had any. I'm sure they do because they do does. 
No, and and Stamkos, I think, was playing hurt in the first round. Of course. And I think uh, and all this time off is going to really help yeah, them. Yeah, I mean, listen, what ends up happening when a team has a long layoff, they usually lose the first game. Um, so they might not win the first game, but I have Tampa winning this series. Well, well, Josh, <laughs> I hate to agree with you so much, but you know, all year long, whenever we talked about hockey, I told you how much I love the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yes, you even went to scout them once. I mean, I think offensively they're loaded. One thing that we found out about the Bruins in this series is that their most of their offense comes from the one line, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think, well, Tampa's two, so, but... I think Tampa just has a lot more offensive weapons. And I think their defense, when they're going to be able to start rolling, uh, you know, basically four defensemen, you know, you're going to have Hedman and McDonough on the ice all the time. Um, I don't know. I, I just, the, the Bruins are great. Don't get me wrong. But I, I like Tampa a little bit more and maybe even in seven again. I wonder, um, I mean, there's certain teams, you just know their historical records against other teams. Like, you know, Boston has Toronto's number, you know, you know, things like that. Um, I don't, I I don't know if, um, have the Bruins and and Lightning played each other in the playoffs? They probably have just based on math, you know, and the probability over the last 20 ish years. But if they have played, it's certainly kind of inconsequential. Like, that, I don't remember a Bruins-Tampa series, you know? So maybe they may have met, but it's not anything memorable. There's certainly not really a rivalry there, although there will be one in a few days, right, When they once they start. You mentioned to me um, uh, off-air that uh, they're not playing till Saturday, which is a little bit weird, but... Yeah, I mean... I guess that has something to do with uh, the Bruins playing today and they right. will have to travel. So, yeah. you know, yeah, well, it's fine. Or maybe it's TV. Maybe they want to put that game on NBC right away on Saturday. Actually, that game is a day game on, on, on NBC. There you but go. if, but if the Leafs had won, it would not be a day game. It was going to be a night game. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, because the, the hockey Canadian fans want them games at night. Let's go to the other game in the East. Um, this is certainly a rivalry (laughs) and we know they've met, um, I can tell you they've met, um, 11 times, I think. I thought it was nine. Or nine. Yes. Nine times. And, and the, uh, Penguins won, I think every time, but one. Is that it? That's from what I understand. Yes. Yeah. And, and a lot of them are recent series, you know, like in the last, in the Crosby era, there's like quite a few. Uh, times they've met up and the Penguins have always prevailed, right? Every time Pittsburgh has won the Cup, they've beaten Washington that same season. Right, right. Um, it's very, very hard uh, not to pick Pittsburgh. Um, although they looked a little bit leaky against the Flyers. Leaky, if you understand what I mean, in, in that, like, I mean, the Flyers are not a great team and they managed to just, they managed to win two games and score a bunch of goals, but maybe that's the way it's going. But there's, like you said, there's a lot of offense, you know? Um, I like both. I don't really care for bo- either goalie. I don't think Holtby's having, he didn't have a good year. He didn't have, he had a decent enough series, I guess, to beat Columbus. Matt Murray's okay. I don't know. <laughs> Um, in the end, I like Crosby better than Ovechkin, and then I, and that's why I would pick Pittsburgh. Yeah. So, um, remember how you said you hate agreeing with me a minute ago? Yeah. yeah. Um, every, every time it seems that every time these two teams meet, there are mm-hmm. there are people out there who say, you know what, this is finally the year that Washington's going to get over the hump and they're going to beat the Penguins. It, yeah. There seems to be yeah. at least one person that says that every year. Well, my son has been. My son said at the start of the playoffs, "This is the year the Capitals are going to make it. This is the year. This is their year." I see. Well, your son's young. He's a very nice guy, and he's a good. He's a good <laughs> athlete too. Um, and I understand he just got accepted into a good school. So, congratulations to him. However, he hasn't watched as much hockey and sports as you and I. No, that's true. And I recall way back in the day, in the eighties, where. Um, that the playoffs actually started earlier. They started like April 1st yeah, and there was yeah. never any hockey in June. No, but there was this like this known thing that the capitals 
would never ever play in May because May was when the third round started. Right. And they'd never get to play hockey in May. And now they're going to get to play in May because the second round's going to still be on it. But um, I really don't see the Capitals winning. I feel bad for Alex Ovechkin because I think he's a great hockey player. Um, yeah. I, you know, I don't even think there's anything wrong with the Capitals, to be honest with you. They have they have very good scoring. They have a very good goalie. Um, they change their coach, it seems like, every two or three years, and it doesn't make a difference. They still lose to the Penguins. Mm. I, I don't know what you can possibly do to make the Capitals any better. In fact, I, I think they're even the home team in this uh, in this series, if I'm not mistaken. Do they not have home ice? Um, I'm checking on that for you. But, but I'm going to pick the Penguins to win the series. Yeah, they do have home ice. So there you go. Let's go to the West. Predators Jets. The hopes of a nation are resting on the Winnipeg Jets. It's so it's so uh, not true because I don't. Do you feel that there's a thing where like one Canadians? Well, look, there was only two Canadian teams to start with, but like, do you feel that like all of Canada roots for the Canadian teams because they're Canadian teams? Like, I don't feel that. There are lots of people but. who do. Like, there are a lot of people in this country who will root for Winnipeg because they're the last Canadian team alive. However, yeah. as you and I both know, if you look at the rosters of all the teams. Yeah, probably. Well, definitely more than half the players on every team are mostly yeah. Canadian. Yeah, uh, actually, absolutely. I shouldn't even say mostly. More than half the players on every roster are Canadian. Yeah, yeah. And and it might even be where like a team like Vegas has more Canadian-born players on their roster than Winnipeg does. I don't know. I haven't analyzed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I know there will be lots of people that are rooting for Winnipeg for that reason. Um. It's interesting. What do you think? It's interesting that these two teams are facing each other in the second round because they both had the top two regular season records this year, and mm-hmm. you would think that they wouldn't face each other in the second round of the playoffs, but they are. Um, as good as a season as the Jets had, yeah. I I mean, the way Nashville made it all the way to the finals last year and came so close, and the yeah. season that they had this year. And you even mentioned this last episode. The 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 Predators just seem like they're on a mission. Yeah, and it doesn't matter who they play. It seems like they're just that's it. We're 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 winning this series. Like I don't. It doesn't matter who we're playing. Yeah. And so it just so happens that they happen to be playing Winnipeg. I'm not saying it's mm-hmm. going to be an easy series, but I do think Nashville's going to come through and win the series. Wow. Well. I'm going to take a different approach. Okay. <laughs> I do feel that Nashville was on is on a mission. Um, but I didn't love the way they played against Colorado and like they need a lot. They need to have a lot of scoring from different people because they don't have a superstar when it comes to offense. Like, you know, like Subban was their leading scorer, right? So it tells you like they don't have a dominant forward. They get, you know, they have Forsberg and, and Kyle Turris and like they have different guys, although Kyle Turris didn't have a good series against um, Colorado. Um, I think the Jets are just too talented, if you ask me. And I really like their goalie. <laughs> I like their goalie more than Nashville's goalie. That's what it comes down to for me. Just because his first name's Connor. No, that's not why. <laughs> but okay. No, I'm not a fan of Rene. But I just, I like him better than, than Rene. And I like... Um, I really like Patrick Liney. I think he's, I think he's uh, the ultimate weapon. I do, I do actually really like Patrick Liney. You know, everyone was talking about when he was drafted the same year as Austin Matthews, and yeah. and the consensus, the consensus from everyone was that Matthews is definitely the first overall pick, and mm-hmm. like you know, whatever the Jets were kind of, I wouldn't say stuck with Liney, but yeah. but I mean, if the Jets had the first overall pick, they probably would have taken Matthews as well. Um, yeah, yeah. meanwhile, after having seen both of these players play for two seasons, if I had to pick one of them today to have on my team, I would actually take yeah. line. A. I would too. Uh, the only thing with line, a, well, up till this year, like la- last year, line, a fought off a bunch of injuries. So he didn't have, he was plagued by a little bit of injuries last year. And now this year I was going to, I would say, oh, well, Matthews is the one that can stay healthy, but not because he, he also was was a little bit uh, slowed down by injuries this year. So, yeah, I, I like Line A better, to be honest. I think he's much more of like the prototypical power forward, you know? So so you're taking the Jets? 
I'm taking the Jets, yeah. Okay. I'm surprised myself, and I just kind of picked them on the spot right now. Okay. And what do you think? I'm not picking the Vegas Golden Knights in four, I can tell you right now. <laughs> um. Okay, so we're we're down to the last series then. Yeah, Knights well, and Sharks. Well, I mean... I think you know who I'm going to take. I've been I've been a fan of of Vegas since I don't know like the All Star break. Um, yeah. I'm amazed at what they've been able to do, and and I want them to win the Stanley Cup. Um, and I didn't even think we, I didn't even think San Jose would would get this far. To be honest with you, yeah. So yeah. I'm taking I'm taking Vegas. You got to roll with Vegas. You got to roll, right? Yeah. Let it roll. Let it ride, yeah. right? Do you dig that? We're going to Vegas, Mike. Vegas. Vegas. Do you think we get there by midnight? Money, we're gonna be up five hundred by midnight. Yeah! Vegas, Vegas, baby, Vegas. Um, I yeah, went this far too. with them. Why would I stop now? Me too. I like. I don't see. Like you can analyze it because the whole thing is, the whole thing is if you if you start to analyze Vegas's team, right? Mm-hmm. You analyze their team after the expansion draft, and the consensus was they're not good. You analyze their team after the first ten games of the regular season. And the consensus was, they're not good. <laughs> Too bad. They're off to a great start. It's not going to last. And every time, at every milestone of the season, when you looked at their team, all the experts are like, well, they can't keep it up. They can't keep it up. And they just keep telling, they just keep sticking out that middle finger to all the all the critics to say, no, we can do whatever we want. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and and I think they are definitely... Look, like like you said, the two best teams in the West are playing each other, mm-hmm. right? Nashville and Winnipeg. Yeah. It's not San Jose and, and, and Vegas. So I don't see any reason why I don't see any reason why Vegas is not gonna beat San Jose. I mean, yeah, San Jose is a little bit more battle tested, they have a little bit more playoff experience, but not 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 in goal. Fleury certainly has plenty of playoff experience, you know? So There you go. Yeah. So that that I like the Knights too, although Definitely not in four. Well, I mean, none of these series are going four. Although the only series that could go four here is Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I disagree. I don't think any series is going four. And no, no, even, no, I don't think though, any series is going four. Even though I think four. the Penguins are going to win, I don't think they're going to yeah. sweep them because what the Capitals no. tend to do, if you've noticed, they sort of they tease you. Like it'll go yeah. to Game Seven. The Capitals will play great in Game Six, and then they'll they'll make you think, oh wow, maybe they have a chance to win. But no, they don't. Yeah. No, I agree. None of these series are going forward, but I'm saying if there's one, you know, the circumstances would be, you know, they're just they just blitz them all out and that's it. Mm. So, all right. That's the round 2. I guess we'll have to have another little mini episode uh before the next round. We will. What about don't forget the show close. <laughs> show close. Before we sign off, I just want to remind everybody that to make sure you never miss an episode of the Skip and Josh podcast, you need to subscribe. And you can do that on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play Music, most any podcast app of your choice. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave us a review. Uh, we'd love to hear from you via email, skipandjoshshow at gmail.com, via Twitter at Skip and Josh, by liking and following our Facebook page. And as always, you can get the links to everything I just mentioned on skipandjosh.com. Great. I love it. All right. Talk to you next time. Okay. Have a good night. The Skip and Josh podcast is over now. Don't worry. There'll be another episode soon.